All right, well, um, I like to be punctual and you guys were here on time, so we'll get going um, with the presentation. I'm gonna do a screen share tonight. And there's some slides, uh, general slides that I'll cover as we go. Talk a little bit about who I am, a little bit about what Fox, uh, you know, what we do here at Fox and what I think makes us unique. Um, and then we'll have some information uh, on our PTA organization, which is great. And also our school force organization, which helps us out not only here at Fox, but across the entire district. So let me see if I can share my screen and start the presentation. So let me do that. Okay, let's see here. All right, let me put it in presentation mode. All right, thumbs up, uh, Colleen and Sue, if it looks good on your end. Okay, I'm assuming everyone else will see that. Okay, so, um, hi, I'm Mr. Pappas, I'm Mike. Um, I'll tell you just a little bit about myself. This is my fifth year here at uh, Fox as the principal. Um, my, I think my 20th year overall this year in education, I started as a elementary school teacher and I spent 10 years uh, teaching primarily fifth, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade uh, before going into administration. I spent a year as an assistant principal at an elementary school and then uh, two years as a principal, um, two or three, I'm losing my, my timing, but several years as a principal. Um, this was all in the Fremont Unified School District before I came over here. Um, I actually am a community member. I live here in Belmont. Um, my grown children went to Cipriani Elementary. They're, they're both in college now. Uh, so I am a member of the community. And um, that's a little bit about me. Um, let's see. Uh, I have a wife who's a teacher, uh, 28 years in Palo Alto. And um, we got a puppy, a new puppy, COVID puppy, I guess you could say. But so that's a little bit about me. Um, I like to uh, say that I, I'm kind of an open door uh, principal and um, that I'm available here uh, for everybody. I, you know, I'm going to, I think tonight we need to think more about uh, this presentation um, in the respect that it, if we were in more normal times, um, it doesn't mean I'm not available now, but the way I'm going to talk tonight will be more like when I'm hoping come next year, when you join us, that we'll be at school. So some of the things you'll see, will we'll make that assumption. Um, but if you have questions about where we're at now, I will try to answer them. Um, there is a Q&A section, and I think you can type in some questions, and I'll do my best to try to kind of monitor that and answer if possible. Okay, so let me see if I can go to the next slide here. All right, so district overview here. Um, we uh, have a strategic plan. Right now it's pending, meaning um, it sort of ran its course. Um, but we want to make sure we, that we instill a mindset for learning for our students, uh, that we create a collaborative culture for learning. Sorry, I just need to move my picture here. Um, that we sustain a learning environment that promotes, uh, promotes innovation. And also we want to foster global citizenship. So those were kind of yearly goals and they do need to be updated. But we still follow those here at Fox uh, as a general um, kind of umbrella to what we do underneath that. So I expect that we'll have some fresh, uh, fresh strategic plan in the near future. Okay, let's see here, slide number, whoops, sorry, I went one too quick. All right, what's the kind of the staff look like right now? And this is again, estimate a little bit, but I'm the administrator. There's no assistant principal or anything like that. It's just me. We have two office assistants, uh, Maria and Lily. Maria is um, here full time, meaning she's here from eight to four, four thirty, and you'll hear from her if your students are absent. She might call you, or you may be talking to her to call in for different things. And Lily, and Lily is uh, in the office uh, four hours uh, a day, uh, basically eight thirty to about twelve. So we have help here. We have a nurse, uh, Miss. Her real name is Na Lu, but we call her Miss Luna, and. Um, she is typically here five days a week. We'll have to see what next year looks like, um, but that's where it stands now. 
21 certificated teachers uh, in the following grades. This year we have a uh, one TK, three kindergarten classes. We have a, I didn't list this here, but we do have a combination class, uh, which is uh, partially kinder and partially first grade um, right now that's not listed. Then we have three firsts, three seconds, three thirds, three fourths and three fifths. Um, right now I look today, we have about 475 students. Normally we hover closer to 500, 500 plus. Um, so because of the pandemic, uh, some, I, I believe that had an impact on some students not being here. Um, but again, my average here since I've been here has been 500 or, or more. So I would suspect that would be closer to what we would have. Uh, we have two custodians that help us out. Mr. Martinez is our day custodian. He would be here primarily when your students are here helping out at lunchtime, cleaning up, taking care of business. And Mr. Mayan, who is our night custodian, and he takes care of the school at night. We also have uh, a part-time school psychologist who's here uh, dedicated to us a couple of days a week. And we have two different speech pathologists to help our students that need that. And we have um, also what we call paraprofessionals who are assigned to uh, different students that may have those needs. So that's what our overall uh, staff looks like. Okay, let's see. All right, so in-person learning goals. Um, each year, uh, elementary schools, I think all schools, but I've only had the elementary experience, um, we come up with school goals and we work those goals um, as part of helping us stay on track. And they might sound pretty simple, the goals that we have, but that's that's, they don't need to be too complicated. So what we have for our uh, in-person learning is that we want all of our students to improve in their English language arts, their mathematics, um, as well as we wanna enhance their character and safety and health. And then all of our English language learners, which we have a fair amount. Um, it varies uh, you know, each year, but we have a pretty diverse population, um, relatively diverse, I'd say. And uh, most of our English learners uh, will be the younger students that come in as kindergartners and they're learning their language. And we do a really good job at helping them to get proficient in, in their language. Um, in fact, uh, this last year, um, we're happy to report that we received a, a Blue Ribbon Award for our school, which is a national recognition. And it was because of our uh, work with our uh, students that are learning the language. So. Um, we're proud of that and we'll want to keep that up. So again, these are our general goals that we have for our students. And this is how I sort of guide the staff. All right, um, let's talk about this a little bit boring, but important. Okay, so I want you guys to um, make sure this can be frustrating. I know when you're in kindergarten, you know, especially if this is your first child and you're wondering about school and now there's a pandemic and all these things, um, registering for school can become kind of stressful. So let me take you through it. When you do enroll, um, and it, you can start on February 3rd, so don't try to do it tonight, but February 3rd, you can start. You're just going to go to brssd.org. That's our main uh, district website. And um, on the right-hand side, uh, you'll see some black rectangles and one that says 2021-2022 enrollment information. That's the one you want to click on. Once you get to that page, there's an enrollment form. You'll see the link, it's real obvious. Click on that and fill it out. The part that usually gets families kind of tripped up is, is the paperwork, what you need to provide. So I just wanna be clear tonight, when you fill out the enrollment form, that does not mean you're enrolled, you're not done. Okay, so just really, I wanna hit you with that a couple of times just so that you're not frustrated later, late, you know, down the road. So here's the things that you'll need to upload. Um, for parents, uh, either a driver's license, an ID card, or a passport, okay? So I'm assuming you can take a photo and upload it or scan it. For your students, a uh, birth certificate or passport. Proof of residency. That's really critical because sometimes families are trying to go to school somewhere where they might not belong, right? So we want to make sure that we have room for all of our families that uh, legitimately live um, in our district. So we do um, look at that carefully. So a property tax bill is sufficient, or if you're leasing or renting, uh, having that 
a, a current copy of that. Okay, this also proof of residency, two of the following. Okay, that's important. And these are examples, but these are the, usually the ones that uh, most people will bring in. So you could bring in uh, electric bill, PG&E bill, water bill, cable bill, uh, landline if you have it, cell phone, garbage, uh, et cetera, those type of bills. So you'll need two of those along with the proof of residency, okay? And um, lastly, I put immunization records. I put an asterisk by that because we realize uh, for your TK and kinders, they may not have them all yet, depending on how it's going, but what you have, you should upload. And then our front office will reach out to you on what's needed and when it's needed by. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. But the, the point I wanna uh, really hit home is until you get all this stuff and you're not enrolled. So please, please, please do that. And if you have questions about it, just call us here um, at school and we can help you or the district office could help you too. But I don't want that to get in the way of, uh, I don't want your experience to start off stressful, okay? So we wanna get you into school. All right, um, okay, so what is, what is a typical kindergarten day look like? Again, we're making the assumption we're here at school. Um, our normal uh, schedule is 8.25 to 1.30, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. So it's not an all day kinder, but it's also not half day. It's, it's sort of right in between. Um, Wednesdays across the district is an early release day and that, that counts for the kinders as well. So 8.25 to 12.20, that's our normal schedule. I presume it will be the same when we get back. That's why I'm going with this. There's always a possibility of, of, of some changes. Um, lunchtime uh, for our kinders is at 11.30 and um, Families, uh, you need to provide snacks for your kids, okay? We have some emergency stuff, um, but we prefer you provide, um, you know, something your healthy your students like. Um, lunch itself, you can purchase lunch. There is a lunch program. I'm not gonna go into detail about that now, but we'll give you, give you um, options as you, you know, when we get closer to school next year, uh, but you can buy lunch and they have different options that you can do. Um, drop off and pick up. All right, this is, this is one of the things that stresses out parents the most. I'm gonna say this in, in all honesty. Um, in a normal school day, we're gonna have 400, 500 kids coming to school at the same time. And we're at a school that was built in 1970 when we walked our kids to school. And now everyone gets dropped off, primarily, not everyone. A, a large percentage comes in a car. You need to be patient, please, please, please. Give yourself some extra time. Um, remember, I always tell my, my uh, families that students aren't late to school. Parents are late to school because they're taking their kids to school, right? By the time it's high school, that's different. But if your student's late, they come into class late, they're nervous, it's, it's scary. So give yourself some extra time, especially that first few weeks of school. Um, you know, the first two to three weeks to kind of get in the rhythm. If you can park, you know, way down the street, like up uh, one of the other side streets and walk, it's even better, less stressful, gives you a little chance to talk, you know, walk your student up to school. And again, we're assuming that we will be able to uh, congregate more closely uh, come, come that time next year. So keep that in mind because uh, it, it, it does become a problem. And the other thing I always say every year is, um, you know, when you're honking uh, at, at the car in front of you and you're angry and you're, you know, you want to, eh, it's probably the person who lives down the street from you. It could be your neighbor that you haven't met yet, right? We're all coming from the same place. So, you know, do your best to, to be patient and nice and um, it'll pay off. So, now we do have before, uh, before and after school uh, options. I don't have any information for that tonight, but I'll just generally tell you what that looks like. We have an on-site program called Curiosity Corner and we partner with them. And um, they typically are full really fast. Uh, so you may wanna look into that sooner rather than later. Um, there's also Footsteps, which is uh, at most of the other schools and they will pick up students here and take them to one of their other locations. Might be Cipriani where they take some of the kids. 
uh, might be down to Barrett Park. There's a couple of options. And then there's some other private um, centers that pick up students. So, but again, I recommend, you know, thinking about that sooner rather than later to make sure you get yourself uh, a spot if you need it. And then some of them do either the morning or the afternoon or both. Okay. So that's, there's your kinder basics. Let me touch base on our TK. So if you're any TK families out there, TK is a little different. TK uh, goes from 8.30 to 12.20 every day. So they still have a short day. There's no weird schedule. It's just, that's the, that's the time every day. Um, there's no lunch for them. So you want to give a nice snack, um, drop off and pick up. Now with our younger kids, and I should have probably said this with kinder too, at the beginning, uh, you'll probably want to walk your, your student to class, right? If that's allowed. Um, and that's understandable. Um, so again, provide some time to do that. And pick up, same thing. If you come in to pick up your students, the good thing about TK is that there's no one else picking up at that time. So it's usually nice and easy to get in and out of the parking lot, right? It's not the end of the school day. What do we work on with our TKs? A lot of social emotional skills, you know, they're, we're, we're kind of teaching them what school is like, you know, how to be in a classroom, how to share, uh, how to get along. Um, and of course, yeah, we're learning how to communicate our needs. Um, and you're learning your basic skills, right? In language and math, your, your letters. Mr. Whiteman uh, has been our uh, TK teacher for the past few years. I suspect he would be next year. That could change, but he's been a kindergarten uh, and or TK teacher for 22 years. So a lot of experience there um, in that realm. Okay, uh, let's see, let me go to the next one. All right, curriculum. Kindergarten has uh, official curriculum and uh, I won't bore you with it, but I'll go through it and you guys feel free to look it up to get a better idea. Uh, we use the, for our language arts program, we use the Readers and Writers Workshop. It's called Lucy Calkins Readers and Writers Workshop. For math, we use the uh, Houghton Mifflin Math Expressions. We have a social emotional curriculum. It's called Second Steps. So those are the three sort of things that have books and uh, internet to it. Um, and then what we do follow here, which isn't really a curriculum, but it's called PBIS, it's Positive Behavior Intervention Supports. Um, and our mantra is that we're safe, respectful, and responsible. And that, that's across all the, all the classrooms. And we recognize students for that. Um, we try to really promote recognizing the good things that are happening um, as opposed to only punishing the bad things, if that makes sense. We try to balance that. Doesn't mean there's not consequences here at school, there is, but uh, we work hard to show the students how to be safe, respectful, and responsible in, in all the locations, whether it be a classroom, uh, the library, our multi-purpose room, uh, the play structure, you know, we, we model what it looks like in all those areas so that we can teach them that. We have a program we call Caught Being Good, um, that teachers, anyone really on campus can give students copying good for being respectful. You know, maybe they open the door for somebody, maybe they picked up a pencil for somebody, whatever it might be. And then we do a, a weekly drawing. I have some uh, tangible prizes, um, nothing great, but it, the kids do get recognized. They like to hear their name over the PA and they can come pick them up. And then um, we've done character awards monthly where we have an assembly and students get recognized for honesty, uh, empathy, things like that. Teachers select those students, take a picture of them, we hang it in the office, um, they get a certificate, and it's, it's nice. It's kind of a fun thing. Um, and then attendance. Um, we always kind of vacillate on that, but uh, we do want to recognize our kids that are able to be here all the time, okay? All right, let's see here. Let me go to the next one. All right, so this is my last slide. So for you guys as new parents, you know what? Some of you want to be involved and that's great uh, that this school does have a very involved population. Um, so here's a, a small sampling of what you could do if you wanted to contribute to school. Now we have room parents, that's really important. Helping the teacher organize events, uh, take care of a lot of different things. The teacher sort of guides that. Classroom support, sometimes uh, parents come in and they work with a student. Um, you know, under the supervision of the teacher. Maybe that needs a little extra help or a group. Um, for kindergarten, for example, oftentimes they have uh, centers, right? And you might have four centers and the teacher's at one and you might have three parents and we kind of rotate through. So the teacher can pay attention to what's going on, but you might be uh, helping them uh, on the letter K or maybe some 
uh, science uh, project where they're having to build something and you might need to help them out. So there's that. Yard duty, I can always use help on that. The more eyes out there, the, the safer we are. Uh, we tr traditionally have field trips and we need parents to participate and help supervise. Uh, we have events like the book fair and the science fair um, and, uh, and a lot more. Uh, so there's lots of opportunities if you want to get involved. And I, I think that's why Fox is a good school because of our involvement. Um, I try to create a culture of in inclusion that, um, you know, I'm, I'm the, the, you know, the leader per se, but I like to do it collaboratively um, and, and do it with, um, you know, your blessing. In other words, what do you guys, what do we want, what do we want to do here at school? So that's sort of, um, that's sort of what I've got to say. Um, I was going to, uh, again, I, I've got, I'm sharing the screen, so I'm not sure if we're getting Q and A's. It's, I can't quite tell. Um, so maybe at the end, I'll check that and we'll go from there. But I think Colleen, are you up next in the slides? I think I'm gonna introduce you, yes? I am. Yes, thank you. All right, so everybody, um, this is Colleen Greshaw. Colleen is our PTA president and she has, um, twin sons here in fourth grade with us. And um, she's took over as PTA president this year. Mm -hmm. It's a two year term. Um, and last year, I can't remember, you were doing something on PTA. Last I was the communications chair for the past okay, couple yeah. years. All right, well, I'm gonna uh, quiet down now and I'll, I'll let you take over, okay? No problem, thank you. Thanks, All Mr. Right. Pappas. Yes, I am uh, Colleen Breshock. I am the Fox PTA president, as Mr. Pappas said. And I am here just to talk to you a little bit tonight about the PTA, uh, along with Sue Constantinides, who's on here, uh, to talk about school force. And I'm actually going to turn the mic over to Sue first, because uh, she's going to give a brief introduction on school force, and then I'm going to segue into the PTA. So Sue, I'm going to hand the mic over to you. Okay, great. I'm going to the next slide. So we will... Um, explain what school force is and then we'll hand the mic back over to Colleen and then she will uh, go through specifically what happens at Fox with our PTA. I can go to the next slide. All right, this is just an intro. Um, so, uh, and I'll go into more detail, but there's something called the Education Commitment Campaign, which is a joint fundraising campaign targeted in the fall uh, between School Force, uh, which is our foundation, and um, all of the PTAs at all the schools in the district. Um, and our slogan is unity in our school community. Um, we came together to do joint fundraising for the first time this fall, and it was a success. So, all right, next slide. Okay, so I'm going to go through what is School Force, um, why do we need an education foundation, how do we spend the funds and also um, share a little bit of information about you know how we can donate and when okay next slide okay so what is school force so school force um, uh, provided 2.9 million to the district for supplemental funding um, last year i believe the district budget is somewhere around the 55 million range so close to 3 million is actually very substantial uh, we are volunteer driven. Um, we have one full-time paid employee who is executive director of the foundation and two part-time employees that I don't even think work half-time. Um, everybody else who runs this is a volunteer. Um, we come from every single school. Um, I am a voting board member on the School Force um, Education Foundation board and I am also on the PTA board. So my job is to go back and forth be, between the two. Uh, school force at a high level funds our libraries, reading specialists, our counselors, art, music, PE class. Uh, we also do teacher grants in the fall. Um, we have a fourth and fifth grade science teacher, which I know sounds very far away <laughs> to you, um, but it, it'll be here before you know it. Um, and it really helps get these kids prepped for middle school. Uh, social emotional learning, uh, technology like Chromebooks, um, and I really want you guys to keep in mind that if for some reason we did not have a foundation, um, we more than likely would not have the ratios that we have in the classroom. Uh, most of our, I think, kindergarten classrooms are 23 to 25 students this year. Um, for, you know, 
districts that don't have a foundation in our county. Um, some of them have 30 kids in their kindergarten classroom. So, okay, we can go to the next slide. So why do we need a foundation? So what you're looking at here is um, a little bit of, it could be a shock if you haven't seen it before. If you're a recurring parent, you, you know this well. Um, so what you're looking at on the left-hand side here is every uh, district in San Mateo County. Typically, when we look at budgets and funding for districts and specifically ours, the bulk of the money comes from the state. It's about 85%-ish comes from the state. So it matters. So this is showing us the per pupil funding uh, that's coming from the state. Uh, we land at a little bit over 8,000. The state average is at 11,000. If you look at a lot of schools throughout, or a lot of states throughout um, the US, I, I think Vermont and New Jersey and, and a lot of places like that, sometimes they're up in the 18K range, um, even as an average for their states. So there are some districts here that are very high um, because they are in an influent area. So if you look at Portola Valley, Woodside, Hillsboro, you would think, oh, that's interesting. You know, they're more affluent, they're in the higher end, they probably have more property taxes coming in. That's true. They also have low enrollment compared to the property taxes that are coming in. You also are seeing some other districts here that aren't necessarily in affluent areas. Um, however, they are more than likely receiving additional money from the state for three reasons. If you have students that are in a foster care program, English as a second language, or, or at or below the poverty line, uh, these are um, students that receive additional funding from the state. If you are a district where I think it's 50% of your students are in even one of these categories, you get a whole chunk of additional money from the state. The Belmont Redwood Shores School District uh, has about 14% of our students in these categories. Um, you know, I think the state average is, is even upwards of about 60%. Um, our average in our county, I think, is at around 30. So um, we just have a really low percentage, so we don't have a lot of additional money coming in from the state. Um, so I wanted to just really point out to you our biggest bucket of funding. Um, we're in a, in a mixed bag where we have very high enrollment. So over the course of the last 15 years, our enrollment has doubled and the property taxes, yes, have increased, but they have not been able to keep up with, with the property or with the needs that we actually have. So we have a mix, just like Burlingame, just like San Carlos, high enrollment and the property taxes can't keep up. Okay, we'll go to the next slide. I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly because I already talked about what School Force pays for. I do wanna call out this biggest chunk here, the, the blue, the light blue piece of the pie. The majority of the money actually goes to pay for specialized credentialed teachers, librarians. Um, some of this budget is for money. Um, our staff would absolutely be um, reduced. And I do also want to call out that specifically for this year, we ended up using school force funds to increase counseling. Uh, we have new online tools and platforms, which we plan to keep. We gave teacher grants so that they could get new technology for their distance learning, and we're doing more social emotional learning. So there was some agility there when we found out we were not returning to school. Um, the school force funds actually helped get our, our school ready for that. And I do want to call out PTA cannot hire staff. Colleen, as the PTA president, is not going to go out and hire reading specialists or teachers. So she'll talk more about what PTA dollars are for. This school force money is what pays for staff. It's what pays for what happens between 8.30 and 2.30 or whenever your kids are in class. This is the core curriculum, the core academic experience is, is what school force is ha helping to supplement. Okay, we can go to the next slide. I, I'll go through this really quickly. A lot of people get a little confused. Um, PTA, as they fundraise in the fall, can they spend the money that year. School Force is a little bit different. The cycle runs from July 1 until June 30th. So the funds that we raised from July of 2019 to June, this last June, 
we're spending now. What we're fundraising for now, up until June 30th, we will spend next year. So if you choose to donate now, it will actually go to your child's um, uh, experience for, for next year. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so we talk a little bit about how do we donate. Um, so again, the Education Commitment Campaign is a joint fundraising effort that we had in the fall. We plan to do it again this year. Um, for some of you, this may look a little bit like sticker shock. Um, the PTA asked for $250 per student and School Force asked for um, $1,550 per student. Um, so the total um, ECC donation, again, the joint campaign, ends up being at $1,800. Now that being said, when people donate $10, $20, $50, because that's what's right for them, we are in incredibly grateful. We would rather have people donate at the level that they're comfortable with if, if this amount is too high. Um, as you can see, as I've been talking about, if school force did not exist, our school would look dramatically different. Um, if you can imagine a teacher in kindergarten, instead of having 25 kids, having 30, then having no reading specialists for the children who need extra help, having no counselors for children who maybe need some behavioral support. Um, imagine what their experience would look like, um, but that's what School Force helps um, create a better experience for the students overall. And I know that this may sound like a lot. Um, I just would ask you guys to think about, you know, I had my kids in a full-time preschool. What, what are you spending now <laughs> for preschool? Uh, if you're evaluating private schools, you know, the experience where we're an award-winning school, um, and I think it's very comparable to private schools, which can be 10 to 40K a year. Preschools can be upwards of 20K a year, and we're asking for, for 1,800. Okay, go ahead. And I'll hand it off to Colleen, but the way we ask everyone to think about what is School Force and what is Fox PTA, it can be a little overwhelming and confusing. Um, we ask that you think of it like a home. So school force is basically this foundation, the wiring, the lighting, the plumbing, <laughs> the walls. We are the foundation, we're a literal foundation, but we basically are, are, are the foundation of that home. PTA would then come in and kind of decide specifically for Fox or Cipriani or Central, whatever schools it is, um, what color, pillows should we put on? What sort of art are we going to put on the wall? How do we decorate that home? And typically within the PTA, we have a lot of freedom to do that. And we'll talk about what we fund and Colleen will share that with you. Um, but School Force is a district-wide effort to many times work across schools. Our librarians are shared across schools. Our reading specialists are shared across schools. It creates efficiencies when we work with vendors and partners. We do it as a district instead of all the schools going off and doing their own thing and we're wasting time. Just like a business, uh, there are certain things that we need to centralize, which would I would say pretty much be school force and certain things that we decentralize, which would be the, the PTA. Um, so I'll hand it over to you, Colleen. Awesome, thanks, Sue. The Sue has done this role for, I guess, two years now and she is very knowledgeable and we are so glad to have her in this role. Uh, representing Fox because as you can see, she's extremely uh, knowledgeable about this. So thank you so much. I feel like I get to talk about a little bit more of the, the fun stuff, like the furnishing of the house. So <laughs> bear with me a little bit. Um, just to give some background on myself. I know Mr. Pappas mentioned how I have uh, twin fourth grade boys uh, at Fox and we actually moved to Belmont just uh, three years ago, three and a half years ago. It seems longer than that now because it is such a welcoming community. And a big part of that was my involvement in the PTA. So when I thought about PTAs previously, I really just thought it was all about the social aspect. I thought it was like, oh, meeting up for coffee chats or happy hours or, you know, community building events. And truthfully, I thought, well, I'm probably not going to participate too much in that. I work full time. Uh, we have no family support here. I'm going to be crazy busy. But then what I realized, even just within a few weeks of being at Fox, was I couldn't believe how much support 
the PTA provides to the school community, financial support, but also enriching experiences. And really also that the community was just so welcoming. I found that a lot of people at Fox are transplants like ourselves. It's a very familiar scene across Belmont and Fox is representative of that. Well, of course there are people from this area, but there's also people from all over the world and people who realize the importance of making connections and helping each other out. So when I started to really dive into the PTA and I realized how much that they did for the school community, I was just amazed. So when you think about some of the enriching experiences, things that you know make a school day fun for kids, besides of course the education, which is just so important and the most important aspect of school, but assemblies, book fairs, uh, science fair, chess club, our recycling program, the yearbook, all of those things are really run by and paid for the generous donations of parents and supported by parents. And, you know, Mr. Pappas talked about, for instance, like room parents, how the room parents are actually PTA volunteers who pair up with the teachers and provide, you know, help for the holiday parties. And when we're on campus, you know, making copies, those are all things that are done by the parent community. So we really work hard to try and find as many ways possible that we can support our teachers, that we can support the staff, and that we can really make it an enriching experience for the children. So Mr. Pappas, can you go to the next slide? These are just some of the you know, mission statements that we have uh, for the PTA. And you can see here in this purple box, all of the different programs and really community outreach that we do at the school. And the funny thing is, is that we thought once we went virtual, once we went distance learning, a lot of these programs might need to go by the wayside, but we have a lot of parents who have great initiative, who are like, no, we'll find a way to still have, you know, our first ever virtual book fair, or we'll have our first ever Fox Travaganza talent show, or our first ever science fair online. So really what we're finding even this year, even though we're separated and it's so, you know, it's so hard, not everybody being together on campus, we're finding other ways that we can still bring the community together, which is more important than ever. Another uh, aspect of, you know, PTA is of course the fundraising because I, a lot of these programs need money uh, to support them. As Sue mentioned, really the, the biggest amount of money, the most value uh, for your buck is your donation to School Forest. I mean, I can say that as the PTA president, you know, obviously I want the donations to the PTA, but really School Force is that foundation, but the PTA does, you know, fund important things as well those enrichment activities that I mentioned, those clubs. We also really try to help our teachers. And anytime I pull parents, you know, informally, like what's the most important thing you want your money for the PTA to go towards, it's really back in the classroom. And it's to the teachers. People realize that teachers spend sometimes, you know, out of their own pocket money for school supplies. And we really do not want our teachers doing that at Fox. We really want them to feel like, hey, if they want new books for their classroom, that they can come to the PTA and they can get that. Or if they want you know, to get art supplies for a unique art lesson that they just saw or take an online conference for something that interests them, we want them to have that ability. And so we try to empower them and we don't wanna micromanage that and say, oh, let's, you know, let's approve this, let's approve that. We try and give them the funds and then say, you select what you think you need for your classroom. So those are just a couple of things that, you know, the PTA is behind. Um, also, there's just, like I said, lots of opportunities to volunteer. Of course, there's more opportunities during uh, physical in-person learning, but there still is during this virtual learning. And I'm hoping that next year, you know, we'll be, we'll be back to normal and we'll all get a chance, you know, to, to meet on campus and, and do some of those things. So um, on the next slide, I just wanna talk about some of the communication channels we have. Another important part of the PTA is we really take it seriously communicating uh, news and events at the school and also within the district. So uh, the PTA runs the Fox website. So if you go to fox.brssd.org, 
you will uh, see we keep it pretty up to date. We try and keep it current. We also have a link on the homepage to our weekly newsletter. And if I can give one recommendation, it is to go sign up for that now because you will get every Sunday morning an update on you know, what's happening. And it'll just give you a good feel for next year because a lot of the things we have traditions, things that happen in January now are probably gonna happen in January next year. And just see you know, some of the programs and things that are offered, not just at Fox, but across the district. We also have a very um, active Facebook page, which you can sign up for now. We have uh, lots of photos and announcements and things posted there. We also have a school calendar on our website that you can subscribe to so you can get updates uh, right on your phone for school events. And then we have a buddy program and a directory, which you can't enroll in either one of them until you are actually enrolled at Fox. But the buddy program pairs new parents up with uh, veteran families just to answer questions and to help through the process. And then our directory, which is just a great resource of all of the members of the Fox community. So I think that covers it for me. The only thing I just wanna add is if you have any questions at all, you know, my email address is there, uh, president at benfoxpta.org, as is Sue's, fox at schoolforce.org. And I just want to say, you know, thanks so much for uh, listening to this, because I know how hard it is on a school night to have another Zoom to do. <laughs> and that I hope to see you on campus next year. And that you're, if you're new, brand new to Fox, uh, you're really coming to just such a wonderful, welcoming school. I can't can't think of a better place for my kids to go and uh, hope to meet you in person soon. All right. Thank you, Colleen and Sue. Uh, much appreciated. I'm going to stop sharing here. Um, there we go. Um, so, uh, yeah, one thing I want to add to that, too, is, you know, the newsletter that uh, that the PTA does really, you know, a lot of schools principals do like a weekly update and I don't do that and I and there's a reason because the newsletter that the PTA does I would be very redundant um, so when I do reach out to the community it's something I feel is important that I need to remind or maybe something uh, special so it's it's great I actually Sunday morning look at it and it tells me what I need to take care of for the week. So, um, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, that's coming up, you know? So, so it's a great partnership. Um, like I said, we work together here um, and that's what makes this, the, the school a great place. Um, um, let me see if there's any questions I can answer. Um, there are a few that I answered, but the ones that are open are more curriculum. Okay, so let me see here. So I think they're best for you to all right, so let yeah. me see. I'm going to, instead of, uh, I will just go ahead and answer these um, verbally here, I think. So um, someone asked if we have project-based learning for kindergarten. Um, I wouldn't say that, although we do have, um, you know, hands-off, hands-off, hands-on activities. We have a maker space on our, on our school that I know our kindergarten uh, teachers utilize. Um, so, so there is that because we want that innovative piece um, but I don't know if that's exactly what you mean. It's, I wouldn't say it's a traditional uh, projects-based learning. Like I know that some districts do that um, across the board. So um, social studies and science classes for kindergarten. Um, yeah, there is curriculum for, uh, for both of those. Um, uh, I don't know if uh, twig science is what we use. I didn't have that in my uh, presentation. Um, and then we have a uh, T, uh, TCL uh, social studies. So yes, the answer is yes, we do. Um, what's the enrollment age for, uh, I think it says for K. Um, that's a great question that I don't want to mislead you. There is a, a specific age. And what I would do is go to that enrollment page that I mentioned at the beginning. It has the dates. I think you have to be five by a certain date. Um, there's a window of time, but I don't want to miss misquote it. So check the website as I look today and it's there. Um, let's see. And when can the students start um, fall or can they start in summer? Okay, so there's there's no um, 
there's no program in the summer. So we're talking, what we're talking about tonight is for fall. Typically we start about mid-August when school actually starts. Um, so that's what we would be talking about for our incoming TK uh, and kindergartners. Um, can you visit the school? Um, yeah, interesting question. Um, normally, yes, of course. Um, in this situation, I would reach out to me and maybe we could work out um, a way to do that. Um, normally we would have a tour for all of you guys if we were here, it would happen during the school day and we'd be, you know, parent volunteers would be walking you around uh, and showing you some classes, you know, in session. Um, that's traditionally what we've done, but obviously we can't, we can't do that. Um, question about the combined class. Well, combination classes are not all that unusual. Um, in schools, what happens is depending on enrollment. So all of you guys sort of determine that. Um, since I've been here, this is my second or third combination class, but the first one for a kinder first grade. So what that means is we had um, more kindergartners last year than we could fit per se. And when they roll into the next grade, it impacted that. Will that happen next year? It's hard to say. Our um, numbers are down a little bit from the beginning of the year, but combination classes are always a possibility, regardless of whether you're at Fox or any other school, to be honest with you. Um, so what that is, is one teacher teaching both grade levels. Um, and I actually was a combination teacher at one time, thir third and fourth grade. So um, it can be a great experience, but a lot of parents get re really nervous about it, thinking their children aren't going to get a equitable experience. Um, but I would argue that, that, that you do, but it is a little different. So that, again, that's, that is a possibility for next year, but I, I can't really speak to that until sometimes it happens right before school starts, depending on how enrollment happens, because, you know, everyone can enroll right up until, well, beyond when school starts, but, uh, you know, right up until that August date. So I hope that helped, uh, our anonymous attendee out there who's asking good questions. Um, so with that, I won't um, keep you guys up too late. I promised I would try to get, do this within an hour. Um, again, I apologize that it's not the way I would like it. Um, meaning, you know, you guys normally were at school and I get the chance to, you know, you get to see my, you know, well, you see my face, but you get to chat with me. I get to see who you are and, um, you know, work off of that. But I'm, I'm, optimistic about next year and that we'll be here and we'll have kids here like uh, it should be um, and maybe even sooner than that but for, for you guys um, you know I hope that's the experience we can we can give to you um, let's see if you have questions for me I'm just m pappas at brssd.org uh, if you want to email me and just say hey I was at the meeting and I was wondering about this or um, you know, you can leave your phone number. We can, we can talk that way too. I'm of the little older generation um, and I still talk on the phone and I like that. So that's fine with me. Um, it's okay to do that still. My kids know, but me, yes. So if you feel that way. Um, other than that, uh, Colleen or Sue, anything else? You guys are, are good? No, thank you. Okay. Bye. And uh, Pam in the background, Pam, anything? We're all good here? I think we're all good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, again, everybody, thank you for uh, participating. I appreciate it. We had about 30 people, which is good. I'm glad. Um, and um, we'll sign off now. And again, uh, reach out if you have any questions. And I hope to, to meet all of you uh, soon or no later than, than the fall of next, this year. Okay. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank thanks, everyone.